Hello, thank you for joining me on this industry update for week beginning the 25th of January 2021. My name's Charlotte and I'm part of the team at Visit Lincoln. So Visit Lincoln is part of a network of other destination management organisations known as DMOs and we regularly catch up with our um, peers across the country and these sessions are led by our national partner Visit England. And the call that we had last week was a really interesting overview about how other places in the UK are coping with the pandemic with some insights from other DMOs who are speaking to their businesses on the ground. Also this week, I spoke at length with Jamie, who is our representative at DCMS. He looks after the East Midlands and we've got a really strong conversation going with him where we're feeding all of your information, all of your struggles, all of your challenges and also some of your opportunities into DCMS so that they can be used um, in briefing the minister and also used in any future policy and debates that take place. So in today's update, I'm going to run through the notes that I took at the Visit England call that we had. Sally Balcom opened the meeting. Sally is the chief executive at Visit England, and she gave an update about the national work that's taking place for tourism recovery and also sector reopening. At a national level, the government have set up a global travel task force, which is specifically looking at recovery. Um, and one of the priorities of this task force is specifically looking at international travel and removing the barriers that we currently see, seeing around people coming into the UK. Um, as part of this work, they are also working on a tourism recovery plan for England. And there's a really strong emphasis coming from DCMS this week. Um, that this will include a marketing campaign which will stimulate confidence and also encourage um, spend with consumers. It's also going to look at international travel corridors and the possibility of setting up bubbles between countries. Um, and they want to make sure that there's an active dialogue with businesses to make sure that the real issues that you're facing are being heard and can be included in their recovery plans for England. Now, throughout my calls with both Visit England and DCMS last week, both of them highlighted how high on the agenda tourism recovery is with ministers and the government. But also they recognised that timing was absolutely critical to make sure that things don't happen too early or too late. Um, now, I have... Um, I have some calls out with businesses to gather information to pass on to DCMS and Visit England. Um, and as I said, we're really looking for your feedback and your ideas about what you need as a business owner over the next three months, the next six months, and then slightly longer term between two and five years. And if you would like to be involved in this, then please send an email to charlotte at visitlincoln.com. Now, what I'm going to do now is just run through um, some notes I made from other destinations who spoke about the state of play in their areas um, on the call with Visit England last week. And I think this is really interesting. And sometimes we get so focused on what's happening within our own community. Sometimes we forget to kind of look at how our peers and neighbours are also coping. So the first destination to talk was, um, was in Wiltshire. They've seen a real... Um, pent up demand within that 50 plus market and over the last couple of weeks they've they've been proactively approached by the travel trade um, with with um, coach companies looking for new itineraries and this has taken them by surprise but again it kind of indicates what that marketplace is looking like also um, they've seen um Sadly, they've seen 50% of accommodation staff made redundant um, and cancellations coming through, such as Glastonbury, which I think was a bit of a blow to the events calendar. They're also worried about the tier system that's going to be put in place once national lockdown is lifted. Um, and the big question that's coming through from their businesses, which is echoed across the whole of the sector, is around how are we going to come out of lockdown? 
There's also big questions around summer trading with businesses um, wanting to put plans in place, um, but with no clarity coming through from government. Um, and a recognition from businesses in, um, in and around Wiltshire that it's going to take a while to get that international market back up and running. The next destination to speak was County Durham. Um, and they spoke about a similar state of affairs for businesses around business closures, staff being furloughed and, and also redundancies in the sector. I think, again, there was this frustration about a lack of a roadmap to take businesses out of lockdown and many like we've seen um, in Lincolnshire, many businesses are desperate for that Easter opening to occur. They've lost Christmas and there's a feeling that if they lose Easter as well, the impact will be even more severe. Um, on the festival and events um, um, calendar, they felt that now Glastonbury had been cancelled. They were expecting other event organisers to move their events further into the year. And they were starting to see some event organisers look at more virtual delivery as kind of a standard approach or definitely a hybrid model as well. On the positive side, though, in County Durham, um, there are green shoots of optimism. Um, there's been a 70 percent increase in tourism planning permissions for accommodation in County Durham. And what the team there were saying is that this really does show confidence in the longer term investment of tourism versus the struggles that businesses are currently having right now. In the, west of, um, in the west of England, the update there um, looked around um, their attractions and the fact that attendance at some of their core attractions was down 60% in Bristol and 70% in Bath. But again, some positivity. They, the new TV series on Netflix, um, Bridgerton, which is a period drama, they are actively getting interests um, around tours and itineraries and holiday experiences um, around this new period drama that's um, featuring on Netflix, especially from the travel trade again, which is interesting. And on the investment side, once again, they've seen strong applications um, and increasing demand for people to invest in bed spaces, which again indicates positivity for that long term, which is encouraging, but also worrying based on where they find themselves currently. The next destination to talk was Oxfordshire. Um, and it was interesting, the update that we had um, from the DMO there around how sensitive some of their residents are about their consumer marketing that they're putting out. And I think this, again, really highlights how important it is um, as business owners and also um, through our own marketing as a DMO, um, how we need to consider the feelings of residents um, that are part of our sort of visitor economy community and how the messages we're putting out either um, um, support what they feel or um, or challenge the conception really of, of welcoming people back into a destination. So again, just um, just some words of caution about how we how we market destinations now and how we market destinations as the tier um, restrictions lift as well. What also was interesting is we seem to be quite an optimistic bunch um, within the visitor economy um, and their businesses have always been so optimistic and positive. But I think with the third lockdown, they are struggling. Um, just like we've been saying, there's a real drive to ensure the VAT cut doesn't fall off the radar. Um, tourism businesses absolutely need that VAT cut um, once they start trading again to make sure that their cash reserves are up. Some positive news around the Good To Go mark that, that Visit England launched last year. It's been extended into this year, into 2021, and that feeds into that reopening action plan that I was talking about earlier. How do we keep confidence going? So if you haven't got your Good To Go industry standard mark, um, then you can find that on the Visit England website. It was also interesting um, some of the approaches that some of the bigger venues and hotels were taking around Oxfordshire um, with the DMA reporting that hotels and event venues were actually in asking and inquiring about how they can buy mass testing kits so that they can do on-site testing because they very much see this as part of their recovery when planning bigger events. So again, I thought that was interesting um, about the different approaches that those businesses are taking to reopen and reopen safely. 
in Manchester, the context here was around uh, it being a large urban destination. Um, and from that point of view, they have seen different kinds of challenges to perhaps other destinations that we talk to. Um, and in effect, um, they have actually been in lockdown since March 2020 um, because of the infection rates that they've seen. Now, the challenge um, for Manchester, um, which was uh, shared with us on this call, and also other urban destinations, is that their recovery is going to be built around um, the meetings, incentives and conference events market, that business tourism activity. Um, and also they also hosted a lot of larger scale sporting events. And I think the general recognition is that, the, that these could be among the last to reopen um, when we come out of lockdown and back into a tiered system. So they obviously have different challenges to uh, Lincolnshire, which is more of a rural destination. Also, they indicated that um, their, their local airport don't anticipate bringing volume back at any time. So, of course, that will have an impact um, on the city and its recovery. But again, around positivity, the green shoots of recovery um, are there um, and they have reported uh, £250 million of pipeline investment around product development um, in Manchester. But the challenge is what will that confidence be in people returning to the bigger cities and the urban, urban areas um, after coronavirus. Now, overall in Manchester and in other bigger urban cities, there is um, confidence that they will bounce back again, um, as, we've, um, as, we, as we've seen elsewhere. But the big worries are around skills and talented staff who may have been lost in the meantime. So I hope you agree that this was an interesting, um, some interesting insights into how other destinations are reporting their businesses are faring around, uh, around the pandemic. If you would like to feed into the work that we're doing with DCMS, please do let me know. Your information as business owners is really, really important. Um, and we have to keep that line of communication open with government. Specifically, the request that I'm looking for focuses on three key themes. The first one is short term. What do you need as business owners over the next three months around a quick reopening of the sector, hopefully once restrictions lift? What interventions do you need that will drive consumer confidence? So interventions being similar to the ones that we saw in summer last year around Eat Out to help out. The next, uh, the next time period is around six months, so midterm. You know, what help do you need as business owners to open and open um, um, profitably? Now, we realise it's not a quick win, but the government wants to know what can it do to add stabilisers to your businesses and businesses who need that, that early support within the first three to six months of opening. And then the third question is taking a slightly longer term perspective on it. You know, over the next two to five years, what do you think um, needs tackling around restructuring of the sector, mitigating future shocks, relooking at uh, the themes of the tourism sector deal, um, which have now been pushed back because of coronavirus? How do we future proof the industry around skills um, and employment? Um, and also, what delivery models do you need to see that put your business first? I hope you found this industry update useful and we will catch up with you soon.